If you're an introvert, this video is for you. If you're shy, this video is for you. If you're just wanting to build your confidence or grow your confidence about yourself, this video is for you. So let's get into it. Hey y'all, hey! Hi, my name is Alexandria. I am aka Quietly Confident Style and I am a ambivert, but mostly an introvert. I am definitely a shy person, but growing my confidence definitely took some time and I am still growing my confidence. But one of the things that I always like to give an example of is me being scared to speak in public, <laughs> me having a shaky voice. And that was something that I wanted to build a lot of confidence in because I know that I want to speak in public and I feel that that is what God wants me to do to use my voice more in public to tell my testimony of how he has grown my confidence and self-acceptance. I know firsthand how you want to be super outgoing and that's just not a part of your personality. And I'm speaking from personal experience. I'm not a super outgoing person. I'm not a naturally outgoing person. It took me time to get there. I know the challenges that you face, especially being an introvert, being a shy person, and obviously telling my Black woman experience the five habits that you can start today after watching this video to start to grow your confidence as an introvert. Habit number one, be vulnerable. And I know that can be hard to do. I know it's like, Alexandria, I'm not going to be vulnerable with people. I barely like to talk to people. But when you allow yourself to be vulnerable, it shows your strength. And there's so much power in telling your personal story that people will just gravitate to you. And telling your personal story, telling your personal story not only shows strength, but it helps you build authentic connections. For example, one of my personal stories that I about a year or two ago when I started to open up about it is when I was younger, my mom used to pop me in the mouth. And I used to be very outspoken. <laughs> very out. I'm outspoken now, but extremely outspoken when I was a young child. And in this meeting, they were talking about how, well, in this cohort that I was a part of where we were learning about how to navigate policy in the government office, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. And Lady was talking about how her son talked a lot. And because he talked a lot, she was like, let me get him in some speech classes. Me, when I was little, I used to just say the first thing that came at the top of my head. I wasn't thinking about anybody feeling like I had a normal questions and I got popped in the mouth a lot. And, you know, consider being getting smart by stating an opinion or disagreeing with some of the things that were happening. And I said that that made me become quiet because every time that I would share my opinion or my thoughts about something, or if I just had a genuine question when I was little, I would get popped in the mouth. And I wish that my mom would have had invested in that. You got a lot to say. Let me get you in some speech classes. You like to debate. Oh, maybe she's going to be a lawyer. She's questioning everything. Let me help. Instead of seeing me talking a lot, speaking my mind a lot as a negative thing or being smart. And I'm not crying now, but when I was telling that story, I was crying because it is very traumatic for me. And I always say that when I get older, I'm not popping my kids in the mouth. I'm not going to look at them talking back, like them stating their opinion or disagreeing as a reason to pop them in the mouth. Uh, educate them in a way. There's a way to disagree respectfully and how they would go about doing that and hearing them and actually giving a logical answer as to why um, it's going to do things this way. That's one of the personal stories that I shared. And once I told that personal story and I went off crying in the hallway, a lot of people came up to me and was like, Alexandria, I went through the same thing. You know, this I understand why you're so quiet now. I understand why you're so um timid and soft-spoken. Telling that story helped build my confidence and being able to tell it now without crying, I'm just so happy to share that story because I know it will resonate with somebody and it makes me more confident and see and be able to self-reflect and see the journey that I came from without talking. I'm not 
speaking my mind or not using my voice and how powerful my voice is, it has definitely built my confidence in just talking, Sandra. Your voice is powerful. It's needed. And me sharing that story helped a lot of women in that room. And I'm so grateful to tell it. Be vulnerable. There's nothing wrong with being vulnerable. You're going to grow from it. Your confidence is going to build. Like story that you may think is the most embarrassing thing help you connect or inspire the next generation of people and my reason in telling my story of being popped in the mouth and how I I just felt like it wasn't the right thing to do and how it kind of how it did silence me to not speak my mind a lot um because I don't want other moms to do that and one thing that a mom came up to me that a uh, current mother and grandmother was like you know yeah, I'm not going to pop my kids in the mouth anymore. Seeing you, Xandra, tell your story. So you never know sharing your story. It will, who it will impact, who it, was, who it will inspire, who it will help change. You might create a change maker in the world. So tell, be vulnerable. Tell your personal story. Tell where you come from. A good, great part about that is you get to tell. You get to choose the story you want to tell. Okay. So moving on to habit number two, and this one might surprise you. Maybe not, but maybe a little bit. <laughs> Practicing gratitude always. You, I feel that some people can get stuck in what they don't have. And I was one of those people. And it can happen from some time to time. But that's when I go like, girl, why are you upset? You complain about little stuff. There's a whole bunch of things that I could be complaining about, that I should be grateful that I have. And when I wasn't as confident, I would complain about little things. I'm too dark-skinned. I'm so quiet. Uh, I don't have enough money in the bank. I, I used to complain about dumb stuff. My clothes are up to, <laughs> to brand back in the day. Like, I didn't have name brand clothing. Why can't I get my hair done? My hair is so difficult to deal with. And instead of thinking all those things, I... I always say I'm grateful that I have air in my lungs. I'm grateful that I can breathe without difficulty. I'm grateful that I can see. And I, on top of that, see clearly. And I can see in color. I can see God's vision, like creation in color. I'm so grateful to be able to read. I can walk. I have all five fingers. I have a neck. <laughs> so many things to be grateful for. So grateful to be dark-skinned. Look at this skin. Look at the skin across from yellow. Like the orange, the red lip. You cannot beat that. I'm so glad my hair is kinky. I can do so many styles with it. One thing I am obsessed with is my eyes. I am so grateful for my almond eyes, slits eyes. Just think about the things that you are grateful for. And the things that you aren't grateful for are some stuff you're insecure about. Start to be grateful about those things. I have a belly now. You know, I got me a little food pie. And it is what it is. It is what it is. I am still beautiful. I can still wear the clothes that I just have to adjust my clothing. I'm not going to be, oh, I'm so fat. I'm so, I got a belly. I'm, no. I'm able to walk. <laughs> I'm able to still wear clothes that I want to wear. And if that time comes, I hope. <laughs> Never. Where I need to really be focusing on my health, then I will do something about it. But just, just be grateful. Express gratitude every day. It just helps you build resilience, abundance mindset, and a growth mindset. Instead of just being stuck in the, I don't have, I don't have this. Express gratitude, for, especially for the things that you dislike the most. Things that you dislike the most about yourself, write it down in a journal and retwist it to something positive, saying something positive about it. Now let's talk about habit number three, something that's often overlooked, but very powerful. Setting small and achievable goals. Speaking from personal experience, I know seeing you have these big goals. <laughs> and when you're achieving the small things or you're like, I'm not getting close to that big goal, it can become overwhelming. But if you set small achievable goals that will get you to your big picture, game changer. Because you could look at a big goal, you be, you'll lose confidence or motivation or the thought you'll get from personal experience, I start to get the thoughts that I'm never going to reach those goals. But 
when you start setting small, achievable goals, you get the momentum going like a snowball effect and you start to become more and more confident that you're going to reach those goals. You become more and more confident in yourself because you're setting small goals and actually doing them. You're getting closer and closer to your big goal. And that definitely builds my confidence. I always go back to the speaking thing because that's the one that resonates with me the most. And it's easier to explain of just being quiet, shy, never wanting to speak in front of an audience. And now here I am on YouTube talking to a camera very clearly, very confidently, and even talking in a room of two to 200 and 300 people very confidently and clearly, not a shaky word, and I'm sharing my personality. That builds my confidence. Like, it wasn't a overnight thing. It took years and small steps to be more confident in speaking in public, speaking on camera. And each step over the year, I got more and more confident. Like, okay. I can do this. Okay, let me take a little another step. Okay, I can do that. And first thing I remember was going to a networking event by myself and talking to people, which was scary for me. <laughs> but I did it. Set those small achievable goals that will help you reach your larger goal. And you're going to get more and more confident at each step, each goal that you complete. For example, it was something like doing your makeup and you want to be a makeup artist or you just want to do your makeup yourself. And hey, I'm set aside 30 minutes to do my makeup and practice and practice it. You're going to get more and more confident of doing your own makeup. So just set those small achievable goals, build up the momentum and document the journey so you can remember like, oh, look at my first YouTube video. So cringe. I was so uptight, no personality, and I would not watch that video. So if y'all been rocking with me, I appreciate you. Habit <laughs> number four is a game changer, especially for my shy, introverted ladies, our non-binary identifying folks. Practice power posing. Practice power posing. I'll show some examples of power posing in here. You look up some power poses and, and just do them. And I'm practicing your posture of how you sit. Power pose, like just being confident and practicing in the mirror and knowing your power pose. Like power pose, I love doing this one. Especially when I take pictures, this is my pose and crossing my legs, which I will show. I'll read what it says here. Practicing power posing. Research shows that adopting expansive confident postures for just a few minutes can actually alter your body chemistry, increasing testosterone and reducing cortisol levels. It's a quick confidence boost that you can do discreetly before a big presentation or a social event. So get your power poses together. Take a picture too. Love taking photos and power poses are like just doing power poses in the mirror. And talk to yourself while you're doing that, okay? especially before a networking event. I kind of call it like boosting your ego and amping yourself up. But if you know your power poses, especially when you take photos, you're going to be right on time. Finally, habit number five, which ties everything in a unique way. And if you're an introvert, I'm assuming you already do this because I'm a pro at this, okay? <laughs> Accepting silence and active listening that trait is not used enough but everybody if well in my opinion everybody is allowed in this world everybody's not on social media everybody's probably loud at your job and just practicing being quiet is easy for me because it's already what i've been doing have always done <laughs> and just listening such a confident booster and it's so powerful and I think it's a power that should be embraced if you already do it it is not a negative thing and if it's something that you want to grow in I would definitely suggest that we'll say like sitting and this is a review of my own personal experience when I'm quiet in a group a group full of people when I speak people listen I'm silent, but my presence is allowed because I just have uh give off that aura of light. I'm the girl you want to know. I'm the, the I'm the woman you want to know. I'm the woman you want to get to know. And you want to listen to me when I speak. <laughs>
And I noticed that even in a room full of people, I it may be the quietest one, but I am definitely one people will listen and look to for insights. Because I don't talk a lot, when I do talk, people take that with importance. So being quietly, that's where my, my name comes, quietly confident style, like quietly and confidently loud. Like, you don't have to talk a lot, listen to people. You can be quiet in a room and still be in the conversation. And me, I don't like a lot of small talk. What's we doing? Let's get to it. What's the point? What is the next step? Your confidence will grow. Like just sitting and being present in the moment, listening to others, people will respect you even more. And when you give your opinion, people are going to listen. And that's like a, a dopamine it grows your <laughs> confidence. Because if you're a person that doesn't talk a lot, and when you do talk, people start, they really take in what you're saying. You're going to start to know that you need to use your voice and you have something to say that is of importance in this world. Okay? Not only sitting in silence, this helps you build your confidence, but it also builds your understanding of others. You don't have to say much to build a connection. I will tell you that. <laughs> you don't have to say much to network with people. Just your presence alone and your aura will just attract right people and it can attract the wrong people and that's when you need to use discernment i have to use that a lot because there are a lot of energy vampire suckers okay. there you have it five habits that don't get talked about enough that can definitely improve your confidence as a shy and introverted woman uh, these habits you can start today write them down make a goal to do it and i encourage you to do it and just remember, like, putting your confidence, it takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. It takes a lot of intention, uh, your habits, what you practice, what you're saying about yourself. And I truly and wholeheartedly believe it takes a relationship with God and speaking to Him, speaking to him about why you want to be confident. There's no better booster <laughs> than a relationship with God in prayer to help you improve and grow your confidence in the things that you may be insecure about with yourself and these habits i wanted to provide to you that are simple and not generic and actually give a background of myself personally because i haven't always been the most confident at all i used to walk around with my head down a lot because i thought i was the ugliest thing in the world and I do not think that anymore. And I'm just so grateful to God for allowing me to go through that journey to share my testimony with you and let you know that you are going to get there. You are beautiful. You are needed in this world. And these habits are for you. They're small, but they are powerful. They are small, but they are powerful. If you found these tips helpful, don't forget to like comment and subscribe and comment down below which habit resonated with you the most and also what other tips could you provide to a woman that is a shy introvert to grow her confidence in the comments below that people don't talk about enough and until next time stay confident and stay true to yourself you are amazing just the way you are and you are only growing and getting better i don't usually do this but it's in my heart to do. <laughs> I love you. If don't nobody else tell you, I love you just the way you are. And you're going to continue to grow into this most amazing woman that God has destined you to be. And don't you let nobody ever take you off your path or make you lose your crown because you are a queen, a beautiful queen. All right now. Bye. Can't believe I believe